Playing Trade Guitars is giving away this Gibson Custom Shop Les Paul to one of you. How to enter? Subscribe to Playing Trade Guitars on YouTube and we'll give it away when we hit 50,000 subscribers. Welcome back to Playing Trade Guitars. I'm John and that's Zach behind the camera and this is Playing Trade Guitars where we play it and trade it. And you may have seen we've kicked off a series on the best selling guitars from Fender and Squire. But what you might be racking your brain about is what's with all the Fender product lines? There's so many of them. How can you keep track? Today, I want to make it simple with a Fender buyer's guide, the short list of which series to focus your attention and money on. And I'll break it down by price and by features, give you all the information you need. At the top, make sure you're subscribed. Enter with the Glean giveaway link down below. And also, when you're in the market for a brand new guitar, use our purchase link because you support playing trade guitars directly when you buy using our link down in the description. All right, let's talk Fender. Now, for a company that has really kind of four main models, right? The Strat, the Tele, the Jaguar, and the Jazz Master, there are a heck of a lot of production run guitars at any given time. Any given year sees entire product lines go away. Uh, remember the Parallel Universe series? Gone. American Original? in the process of being discontinued. New things to come, you better believe that they're gonna announce probably new product lines uh, in the winter or in the spring. But what we wanna focus on is giving you the main attributes that separate all these various series. And I'm gonna divide these models by price, but as I always reaffirm, price does not always mean quality or the right guitar for you. After price, the features, the main driving features are going to be do you want a vintage inspired guitar that harkens back to the old days of Fender, the beautiful classics of the 50s and 60s? Or do you want a more modern contemporary experience? That's gonna be the kind of fork in the road to keep in mind as you compare various series. Another consideration, do you want an artist model? Because that might make your decision really easy if you're really after uh, say that Stevie Ray Vaughan Strat or Eric Clapton or her. And finally, there's a lot of talk about where fenders are made. So nowadays they're made everywhere from China to Mexico to America. And we'll talk about where the price categories can have you enter or exit those various areas as you shop. All right, let's get started with a look at different price tiers and which is my short list of the Fender product lines that you wanna pay the most attention to as you're shopping for a new guitar. First, a quick passing note on the under $500 market. This is gonna be completely taken by Squire, right? The one you wanna focus on there is Classic Vibe. Check out Classic Vibe. Uh, that's gonna be generally at like a $420 price point. Also an honorable mention to the baritone that Squire makes that's really cool, check that out. Today I'm gonna keep it mostly on the Fender product line, starting with a look at the $500 to $1,000 range. This is gonna be dominated by the best-selling Fender Player Series. The Fender Player Series, you can check out our video, we compared that at an $849 price point to the $419 Classic Vibe Squire. When you're coming to the table with the Fender Player Series, you're gonna get a guitar that is professional level quality blending vintage and modern playability aspects, kind of taking all Fender's, um, all Fender's experience over the years and giving you a solid professional workhorse guitar at a good price. This is gonna be made in Mexico, affordable. It's gonna come with a gig bag, so you probably wanna get a hard shell case for it. But most of your consideration should start here at the Fender Player Series when you're shopping between 500 and 1,000. When you bump it up to 1,000, now we're gonna be talking about two series, including one of my favorites, Vintera. Vintera is a beautiful series that really takes a lot of vintage specs and character, makes the guitars in Mexico, awesome, awesome guitars for the money. These are gonna be around $1,100 for the, for the Vintera series, but that is absolutely on my short list to check out. In the same price range, you can also check out the Player Plus series, which is gonna have some souped up finishes and some more contemporary appointments above the Player series. But probably it's worth comparing the Vintera not only to the Player Plus, but also to that Player series, a tier down as well. Once we break $1,000, you're gonna to start to introduce artist models. So it's actually surprisingly affordable to get an artist level guitar, and that's because they're making these at this price point in Mexico. But you're gonna see some familiar names, everything from Robert Cray and Buddy Guy to the Jimi Hendrix guitar. And one of my favorites, the Chris Shiflett uh, Fender Telecaster Deluxe in that Shoreline Gold, which is super cool. All right, now say you can bump it up to $1,250 to the $1,500 Fender price range. Now comes the entry of the American made in Corona, California, USA, 
the American Performer Series. The Performer Series is replacing what used to be called the American Special. This again is going to be a modern workhorse guitar, the first one that's been introduced here in our price guide that's made in America. It's going to be a workhorse that blends vintage and modern appointments, but it's going to be super dependable. We're also introducing the guitars that are made in Japan. Uh, there's kind of the golden era of 80s MIJ Fenders, which have actually been reissued in the newer JV Modified series. Those are made in Japan. Uh, also, you have the Aerodyne series, which is more contemporary. That's currently made in Japan and a few others. But basically, once we cross the 1250 threshold, we're introducing American made and Japanese guitars into the mix very high level quality, quality guitars. We also have some new entrants in the Artist Series at this price point. You'll see guitars come in like the Brad Paisley uh, Telecaster in that sparkle finish, which is super cool with the uh, nitro finish. The Kurt Cobain signature guitar, the Her, and the Jim Root, which is also really popular for all the heavier players out there. All right, ratcheting it up to $1,500 up to 2,000. This category is pretty much left to just represent one line, which I think is the epitome of kind of the standard Stratocaster made in America today. That's the American Professional 2 Series. Excellent, excellent quality workhorse guitar, worth comparing to the American Performer and the Player Series Strat, but really I think is the perfect blending of vintage and modern playability in Fender's current lineup. And it's gonna blend some of the vintage, some of the more modern playing aspects, and it's something that is a straightforward Stratocaster that does what you expect a Stratocaster to do at the highest quality. Also, right under that $2,000 price range, you're gonna to start to see some real famous artist level guitars like the Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, the Jimmy Page with the, the Dragon Tele, which is pretty sweet, and the newer Jason Isbell. When we break through $2,000 up to $2,500, we're really gonna to come to that fork in the road more than ever because we're gonna be looking at the representation of Vintage Fender in the new Vintage 2 line, which is basically a recreation of these vintage guitars by the year. So, I mean, if you see a 51 Tele, this is a vintage spec 51 Tele in the Vintage 2 line. This is gonna be for all the fans of those uh, beautiful classic Fender guitars where you say, you know what, they got it right out of the gate and I don't need them to change a thing. I just want a recreation of that vintage guitar. Compare that then to the high performance, modern, highly engineered uh, Ultra, American Ultra and American Ultra Lux. This is gonna be higher construction quality, things like stainless steel frets. You even have the addition of a Floyd Rose on a Strat or a Tele, and that's actually gonna top out the, one of the highest uh, production run guitars from the American series, uh, if you wanna get a Tele or a Strat with a Floyd Rose on it. But you can see the fork in this road now where the American Ultra and American Lux should be probably compared to the American Professional 2 to have more of an apples to apples comparison of quality and features at those two different price range. While the Vintage 2 represents kind of a different product category, replacing the American Original and the, and the older American Vintage series for people that really are purists and want a recreation of the vintage spec instruments. It's probably an interesting comparison to look at something like the Vintage 2 series and also compare it to something half the price with the Ventera, which also has that vintage vibe going for it. I think that's worthwhile too. Above 2000, you're gonna get a couple other artist series guitars. That's Stevie Ray Vaughan Strat that I love. Corey Wong, which is a recent artist addition to the Fender lineup, which is super cool. And at the end of the day, $2,500 to $2,600 is about where it tops out. Anything beyond $2,500, you're gonna be looking at some limited edition guitars like the George Harrison Rosewood Tele, which came and went pretty quick. Those sold out instantly, right? You're gonna have um, actually one special one, the hot top priced guitar uh, that Fender was putting out you know, over the past year was, believe it or not, made in Japan and the Final Fantasy XIV limited edition guitar at $34.99. And basically, once we've capped out at $34.99, you're under, you are entering the Fender Custom Shop territory. So all that to say, Fender's pricing strategy, strategy really comes down to, if you want under $1,000, you're gonna be looking first at Squire and then comparing that to the Stepped Up Player Series. If you can spend at least $1,000, it starts to get a little bit more crowded and interesting in the realm of American Performer, uh, Player Plus, and then that Ventera Series, which I love. And once you break $1,500, you're looking at that kind of top-notch American Professional 2, 
before you really want to suit that up and go to the American Ultra Ultra Lux with some highly engineered components above 2000 and then breaking off in the fork of that road to look at the American Vintage 2 series uh, which uh, follows up from the American Original and, and American Vintage spec instruments uh, that people love too. And at the end of the day, I just want to give you this short list because I think it can be overwhelming to look at how many different Fender guitars there are. They have, I think, over 180 production guitars. And like I said, so many product lines completely come and go, but I think keep it simple. Identify categories by price, and that's how I've broken down these. We basically have uh, Classic Vibe Squire up to Player, up to Player Plus, Ventera, American Performer, and then we're moving up to the American Professional 2 before we hop up yet again to the American Ultra, Ultra Lux, and Vintage 2. At the end of the day, break it down by price, the fork of the road, which is contemporary, modern, or vintage. Um, and then if you can do that, or if you identify an artist guitar that you like and they're willing to pay kind of what I think is the artist premium to get those guitars, that might make your decision that much easier too. But here's my just short list recapped as you start to shop Fender. And as Zach and I start to put together these comparisons, uh, we started with the classic vibe versus the player series because I thought that made sense to compare those. And you can see now that probably what's coming, right, is a few comparisons between these that are worth putting head to head. For instance, we can compare uh, the American Performer to the Ventera series. We can compare the American Professional uh, I think probably to the American Performer, but also to the American Ultra. And then at the end of the day, I think it might be interesting to compare that new Vintage 2 series to something half the price of the Ventera. Drop your ideas for what Fender guitars you'd like to see compared in our upcoming videos, and we'll make those happen. But thanks for watching this short list, uh, this little buyer's guide for Fender and for understanding all these product lines. When they reintroduce new ones, always ask yourself, is it contemporary, is it vintage, is it a blend, and what's the price? Keep it within your budget, find the right guitar for you, and we'll keep bringing you all the information to make the right decision. When you're ready to buy, use our purchase link down in the description and make sure you're subscribed. Give this video a like, tell people what we're doing on playing trade guitars, and tell us what you wanna see next. Thanks for watching.